things starting from the lowest current to the highest current and automatically fill in this table for you. In this case, we chose to do a click and test instead of a sequence test. Once this is done, I have, a tr I have to uh, store my test result. And it will ask me if I want to transfer my test result to my result table. And now it updates my result table, which is essentially updating my test results, which I can save back into my file. Now I'm going to switch back to ETAB environment, assume we're done with the phase test. Now you can do the same thing for a ground test, which we, we're going to skip for today. But essentially you can go to the ground mode or ground uh, curve and do the same thing. But as I mentioned, all the curves are passed on. Since this, th this device didn't have negative sequence or neutral as you or sensitive ground, notice those are not populated. The only thing that are populated are phase and ground. So with that, I'm going to go back to my ETAB environment. Now, now that I have done the test, I want to bring the test data back into the ETAB environment. And by that, what I would do is import results. And what it does, it will bring the inf new information back from my um, database into the ETAB environment. So it would say, it would indicate that test result imported was one. Now, what I can do is go ahead and open my comparison table. And as you can see, now I have a new test result which was done at 11.22 a.m., which I can go ahead and select and apply. And that's the relay testing that we just did. Now, if you notice, I'm going to, the first test result that I showed you, this actually, this test was actually done, was done with the actual relay connected to the device and being tested. So this is type of a test result you expect from an electro uh, or a digital relay or a microprocessor relay. But since we're just simulating a test, we, we came up with something like this, which is, which is simulating a test as if I, I didn't know what the um, actual relay curve was. Uh, so I put some deviation in there to generate a, a set of points. But the idea is that once you have the points in here, now you can either choose these points for your uh, relay coordination or get a comparison between what the actual published data is against the relay test results. So you can actually, um, in fact, if you wanted to, you can double click here and you can change these to, uh, to different things. And I don't know if, uh, of course, this doesn't, I don't want to smooth the line. Usually you want to leave it as a, as a point. And uh, you can choose to show this and commit this to a library if you want even, and add this to a library for a future, for, uh, resp a future uh, need. So you can add this to a library, add a category, for example, say uh, test results, and uh, type in the curve name, uh, G multilen. And whatever information you would want to have, this is the description that is uh, provided. So at any point, you can go back and bring this curve for, and add it to your library for, for use in other TCC curves. So you have that choice as well. So if I was to create a new TCC, for example, um, let me create a new one here. Without this device even, I could call up my library and bring that curve in here for other usage without that, uh, without that curve available to me. So I can just use this user curve, um, which is basically my relay test result for uh, a device coordination of for other portion of the system. Um, there are more additions to be done to the art star interface, but of course this is sort of the basics of where we're going with this um, at this point. Now that, that's essentially the art star export import interface. There's more to it, but this is basically the overall feature. There is another section of ETAB Arts interface which is not really utilized by a lot of the engineers right now, but if you're a relay test engineer, you probably appreciate the, the, its importance. And that is the transient response that you can actually generate from ETAB and um, test the relay with the transient response from the program. And uh, with that, I'm going to switch over to my PowerPoint again. So we talked about all this and uh, the, the fact that you can bring the steady state and the published data and show it together. Now the transient response, essentially this is the means for you to simulate and generate a transient response from the, um, the program and be able to show that and, uh, in, back in, in ETAP um, as, a, as a point uh, at which that relay 
operates. Uh, the, the only thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that during a transient response, you have to include the CT saturation and so forth, which is something actually being added to ETAP for future releases. But for now, you actually can export the transient waveform inside the ARTS environment for testing the relay. Um, so basically using, um, uh, in this case, IEC363, which is a transient wave, uh, uh, wave fo uh, format, or using your di digital fault recorders, you can actually submit a waveform into the uh, ARTS environment and test the relay and get the response of when actually the relay will, will operate uh, for that time. Um, to do this, basically, we, there's a program within the ARTS uh, software envi environment called RPRO, which is a wave generator. So you can actually generate waves or import com trade formats and inject this type of currents into your uh, ARTS hardware to retest the relay and get the response back from the relay into the program. So the, the whole idea behind it is that um, during the transient fault, the fault is not a steady state fault. So as a it's a function of time. So if it's, this is seconds and this is current, that the current is changing as a function of time or decaying as a function of time due to AC and DC decay. And because of that, the operating time at which the relay would operate would, might be a cluster at this point. It might not be just a specific steady state point. It would be a cluster of points uh, either sometime above or, or, uh, or close to the curve itself. So that's what we're interested in to see during the transient fault, which is uh, what will happen to the relay. Um, so to do that, we use uh, the, um, we, I go back to ETAB and quickly show you this. In the ETAB uh, short circuit mode, if, uh, and right now the only thing that actually provides a transient fault, the standard is 363, which is IEC, but the format is the same. Basically, it's a transient fault, mean, meaning that it's a fault as a function of time. So a transient uh, fault, if it's done on this system, what I can do is bring up the, uh, the curves, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up the um, number of curves. So as you see, this is the AC component of the curve. This is uh, Ka in function of time. Uh, I have my top envelope of the fault current. And basically what I'm more interested in is the total envelope of the fault, which is starts the fault, and as you see, the fault is, is uh, decaying, the asymmetrical fault. And I'm r I just ran this fault up to a certain amount of time. Now, if, as you notice here, there's an option provided to you under IEC 363 plots for exporting the data to Comtrade. And I can select that specific bus, and in this case, I selected bus 1 uh, to export the data. You can also select bus 3 if you want. Um, let's say we select bus 3 since that's the bus that the relay is connected to. And I would export this to a Comtrade file, and I'm going to save it over an existing file that I have. And it generated a com trade file. And now in the, I, I will switch to my uh, R Pro program, and which is a com trade format generator, which I can open this particular fault, uh, and I have to go bring it up from my. This is the bus that I just created, bus three. So it's asking me to generate this, and I'm going to quickly generate this. So here I have uh, my, my fault uh, environment. I can actually open another fault for bus 1. Okay. So here's another waveform. Basically the idea is that I can take this waveform and now inject it into my device and be able to see the response of the device. Now this is more of a manual process at this point. However, the idea is that you can generate the transient fault push it through ETAP arts and get the response back. And uh, that's a topic that we can cover in another session. But um, essentially, the idea is that the arts environment provides you the means to generate uh, steady state response and uh, measure, the, uh, measure and calibrate your uh, relays, be able to uh, interface your test results within the ETAP environment for future testing and for your device coordination. So with that, I would uh, conclude this session. I hope it was informative and uh, hope to uh, talk to you next time.